Well, good evening, family. How are we doing? Joel and Sherilyn here. Uh, first and foremost, we apologize for being a tad bit late on, um, on getting on this um, live. We apologize for being a little bit late. Um, as you come on in, why don't you help us out by sharing the live and um, letting the word out that we are on tonight. We're very, very excited to be able to join you and bring you this topic tonight. Once again, everybody, Joel and Sherilyn here, and we apologize for being a tad bit late tonight um, in getting started, but we're looking forward to having this conversation with you. Um, all these conversations we're having with you, we're having them out of... Um, Having them out of experience, we're having them out of helping so many people um, right now and in the past with uh, marriage situations. And so, let us know where you're tuning in from. We're excited to be here, man. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, good night, all of Guyana. Oh, yep. Thank you. Guyana. Welcome, Doris. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, help us out and, um, you know, share the live. There's a lot of people that uh, have been asking for help in terms of um, relationships. And um, the only way we can get the word spread again with the, the Facebook algorithm is if you share or like or comment so that it would be on um, be able to be on the people's timeline or so so please help us out um, if it's been helpful to you um, just give us a one if you um, want to hit you know if, if relationship is something that is important and you've been working or helping a friend or a family with just share this with them New York um, in the house yes all right so let's let's give some shout outs we have Brooklyn in the house hey Michelle <laughs> well, happy birthday to you. Thanks for joining us tonight, Jillian. Good night from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome, welcome, welcome. N um, Nikella, welcome. We have Barbados in the house. Yes. Yes, Barbados. Welcome, welcome. Cayenne, French Guyana, welcome in the house. Guys, we welcome you. Um, blessings, blessings. We look forward to um, sharing this evening with you. Thank you for spending your time with us. You could be any with any place doing anything at this time, but we're just um, excited to be here with you. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah. Was that Shia Anthony? That's a beautiful name. Welcome, pleasant good Teresa night to Sobers you. Teresa well. Sobers in Barbados. Thanks for joining us, Teresa. Welcome, welcome, welcome guys. Welcome everybody. Welcome, and we look forward to having this conversation with you tonight. Greetings from Virginia, guys. Blessings to you all and your family. Welcome tonight. We love you guys, but more importantly, God loves you. And um, and you know, Joel and I, we we did not want to do this. Actually, we've been running from this. Um, to do it on a live platform, but we've been naturally doing it with people um, in our lives. Um, a lot of people that watches and knows um, we've been working with people in life. Um, um, you know, over the phone if they live far away from us and uh, we're naturally doing it. Um, so we were kind of, I know I was a little bit concerned about doing it online. I um, didn't know, you know, because I'm a personal person like the one-on-one -on -one touch. But the pandemic so, taught us a lot of yeah, things about yeah, how we can get things done. done. Yeah, so we welcome, we appreciate you guys. Um, if there's anything that we, we say and you like the program, please let us know. Um, we read your messages. A lot of you guys send messages, have questions and that's I've asked for prayers and so we encourage you guys we are here for you that's why we're here so blessings blessings and welcome all New right. York in the house all right Guyana in the house in full effect well tonight we're looking forward to talking to you about some things that make marriage loses it, it loses its spark and and that's one thing we understand now that um, everything that's worthwhile is quite a bit of an uphill climb yeah. Everything that's worthwhile is like swimming upstream. Yeah. You know, um, everybody think that, you know, we think that we can flow with the current or we can become complacent and still accomplish great things, but we got to be very intentional in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than, than a marriage that is like a chore. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than a marriage that lost its spark mm -hmm. and you feel like you're just coexisting. Mm -hmm. You know, I could coexist with a roommate. Mm -hmm. I could coexist with my neighbors, <laughs> you know? I could coexist with some friends because we want to chip in and pay the bills together. But being in a marriage where you feel like you're just coexisting, man, that is some serious toil. Mm -hmm. And that is some serious, not only serious toil, but it causes you to start looking elsewhere because of the flesh and because of the human uh, element that causes us to... To, to want to gaze and look at other things because 
when a marriage becomes um, stale and old, it becomes very tempting. It becomes very tempting. I'm not saying that it is right. Of course, you guys should know us by now. We don't condone um, things that's not right. But what I will say is that it is easy to be tempted in a situation where, thing is, where things are dry and where things are no longer, um, no longer sparking for you. So we want to talk well, about that tonight. Well, our godly design is God created us to be in relationship. He, yeah. he created us. Um, he created the man with certain needs. Um, you know, sexual needs. Um, need need for companionship. Um, need for um, um, respect. Um, need for I'm forgetting some of the needs here <laughs> however and he created a woman to be loved to be cared for to be cherished to be valued um, you know uh, he created the woman to, to, to feel secure and and enjoy certain um, you know romance you know God God is the one that put it in our hearts to desire one another Absolutely. Um, so the the, the 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 desires we have in our hearts was placed there by God, and God said, "When we delight in Him, we will receive the desires of our heart." And a lot of times in marriage, as Joel and I always tell our story, we started, we were ill prepared for marriage. We did not have the proper foundation. We didn't have the great. I did not have a great example in a relationship because I came from a single, um, single parent home, and um, multiple people lived in the house, and so we. I did not have that example. We did not start off on a good foot. So we did not delight ourselves in the way of the Lord, if you say, um, if you get what I'm saying. But we did all kinds of things that we saw people do what we thought. Our emotions took us left, right, and center, and um, all over the place. And then when we realized that, you know what, there's some, there's some loss to this thing. There's some instructions that God put in that beautiful book called the Bible. And when we started happening on these principles and started demonstrating that we saw easy and simple life became, then we realized, you know what, when we delight ourselves in God which is delighting ourselves in his word he gave us the desires of our heart which is the taste absolutely. and the passion for one another absolutely absolutely and so tonight we want to jump in um, and talk to you a little bit about some of these things and let's have let's have conversation yeah, let so us know um, the... what you're thinking about let us know what's on your heart but let's have conversation I want to get right to it Shirley yes, because uh, I'm, we're going to talk about some of the reasons some of the main reasons why marriages uh, they, they begin to lose uh, their spark and number one um, is that you're not sharing all of yourself with your spouse yeah. marriages are meant to be intimate marriages are meant to be intimate and so one of the greatest reasons why a marriage starts to lose its spark is when the couple or one party or both parties in the marriage begin to lose uh, begin to to hold back parts of themselves from their spouse so you're not sharing fully who you are with your spouse and there's many reasons why uh, a, a spouse or both spouses may feel like you know I can't share all of me with my spouse and those are some trust issues true intimacy come about when we let someone penetrate our our, our emotions that we allow our spouse to penetrate us emotionally and then vice versa and so let's talk a, a little bit Sherilyn about having the ability to allow your spouse to penetrate you emotionally and you're not holding back parts of yourself um, from them. And what are some of the things that you feel, Sherilyn, uh, or we've experienced that caused us to hold back parts of our emotion or parts about who we are from each other um, penetrating that area? Of well, of lives? course, trust. Um, trust is one of it, one of those um, situations there. And trust will come by, 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 by our previous experience uh, prior to this the, the 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 relationship you're in right now mm -hmm. luckily so some what are some of the things that could um um cause trust to come mistrust to come into our life well if you have past relationship it hurts you know um abusive relationship people who make you feel rejected um people that didn't um someone that didn't value you someone that cheated on you um some people you know that did all kinds of whether it's physical, emotional, verbal abuse, and that type of stuff, mm -hmm. and um, so you you have this the trust um, situation. It could even be go past based on your 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 um, 
your parents, mm -hmm. you know, if you come from a broken home, you know, your parents have gotten a divorce or you see your mother in a relationship with a father who was abusive and you, or you see her in a rela your, your parents where your father is a rolling stone and um, that type of stuff, then you as an individual, you, you form certain mentalities and certain belief systems, whether we make um, self vows that this is what's going to happen to us and self vow, creating a self vow, we did a talk about self vows, how it puts a barrier of trust um antitrust within you so when you come in the relationship you've had an experience that you're bringing, bringing in, in here yeah. and i always talk about pain you know when you experience certain traumas prior to coming in um the problem the, these um these trauma brings the, a pain inside of you and then we started to treat our pain in certain different ways it's three three ways we treat our pain we treat our pain um deal with our pain by medicating it so you you see that a spouse might be drinking because they're medicate medic medicating the pain or using drugs or smoking or, shopping. or, sh <laughs> or as a shopaholic <laughs> it 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 builds distrust inside of a relationship and it puts up barriers because you're not letting that person to to get into what is that pain or or you're if you don't maybe don't trust the person your spouse or whatever the case may be or this you've made that self out that locks you off mm -hmm. from that individual so now you in a relationship you you can't go past the barrier that you already set up it has to be broken down mm -hmm. the other way people treat um, treat their pain is that they they meditate on that mm -hmm. pain you know you sit down and you think about the things that do happen you know this happened to me and you meditate upon it and it starts to fest fester and becomes even more of a stronghold in your mind so when your spouse comes to you your spouse becomes the enemy automatic because you're hearing another voice you know because when they're talking to you you're filtering it through your pain because you've been meditating on whatever trauma that mm -hmm. you really didn't share with the person or you didn't forgive the person that hurt you in that um, situation and then of course you have the next part which is meditate I'm um, sorry uh, motivating your pain and so people who motivate their pain they get so busy, get busy you know yeah. working they take up all kinds of different responsibilities mm -hmm. they're always cleaning cooking like spending i know spending extra spend, hours spend, at, work. at work taking up extra time they're always busy and they always have a good reason for what they're doing it doing why they're doing this but again they don't want to expose that pain so i believe that um when when a person is feeling there is no trust, they can't open up. And um, trust comes also. Um, the lead lead man behind that is fear. Absolutely, fear. And you know, um, fear another serious inhabitor of of us being intimate and sharing ourselves with our spouse is shame. Mm -hmm. Shame. Um, you know, I, we've seen many relationships where a spouse don't feel like they can have all of themselves exposed to their spouse because of the past that they've had. Yeah. Um, this is a really touchy conversation, but I'm going to go there anyway. The spouse that was abused at mm -hmm. a young age, right. it can be difficult for a spouse that was, let's say, sexually abused you know, at a young age to say I'm going to trust my spouse mm -hmm. with all of me all the details of my past mm -hmm. or that type of stuff mm -hmm. and so it's it can be very difficult for someone that had this type of a past that you can say to your spouse here's who I am here's what has happened to me let me show you all of me and that type of thing now here's here's here is what I would say to a, a husband, for example, right? If a husband wants to earn all of his wife's trust so that they can have that type of intimacy, um, we as husbands have to make sure that we create the environment and we show the level of care and maturity for a spouse to say, you know what, this man is going to be my real in-home pastor. <laughs> mm -hmm. That I could share even a very shameful maybe hurtful disappointed past with my husband that this is what i've been through um a lot of times uh shame the spirit of shame can cause us to to hide not only the the the, the offense that's causing us to feel shame but even hide other parts of us um from our spouse 
um, that that we can't we feel like we can't trust them with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I see somebody made a great comment or a long comment. I want to read it. Carla Johnson. What's she saying? She says a past relationship that has told your um, that you told yourself that you can't trust again, and then when you put yourself and you fall in love again um, in the new marriage, and then your husband cheats again. You know what that does, all the rage, and you, you, you explode, and that type of stuff. So, you mm -hmm. see, so there's a lot of stuff going on there because we got to rem remember that we're now wrestling against flesh and blood enemy. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to deal in when, when we're dealing with personal one on one counseling, one of the things we do is we go deep. We can't, we don't go that deep here on, um, on Facebook because we're, we're trying to give a lot of information within an hour. But when we're working with the spouses, you know, we're, we're sitting with them and we could hear and we could talk about things and their sessions go uh, multiple sessions and the, the, and so we're able to do what I'm going to try to explain right now really quick this the spiritual uh, battle that a person can have you see when traumas and stuff happen to you they're open doors to um, spirits that will come and um, and invade you and these spirits that start to control you for example if as a young girl you experience any kind of uh, sexual abuse or you uh, any kind of trauma um, uh, you 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 then have um, maybe you, the spirit of um, Jezebel or, or manipulation might come into you because you want to be in control you don't want nobody to abuse and use you but what happens is these spirits are very tricky and they're very smart they will end up attracting someone that is going to do exactly what you fear to you. So unless those things are cast out of you, unless you get the healing and deliverance necessary out of you, you will continue to attract the person that these spirits know will attract you to confirm in you the belief of fear. You see, um, the Bible is very clear on fear. This fear not so many times because the spirit of fear brings in all these other spirits that will use and work in tandem to creep to make sure that the fear that we have come to pass. So in certain situations, you might say, "Why? Um, let's say you're in an abusive relationship where, where, where your partner's always abusing you, and then you end up going into another relationship if you don't get the proper healing and deliverance into another relationship. Those spirits are going to attract another person that's going to abuse you again. And then the goal is to make you feel rejected because once the spirit of rejection is on you, the spirit of rejection is always going to try to keep you in this controlled um, setting and they're going to put you in situations that you constantly feel in rejected. Mm. Um, just to put, give you an example. So there's a lot of deep spiritual things that is behind what we talk with what we're talking about. Um, so in, in, in your, in your case, um, you know, you never know whatever spiritual and also generational stuff. So if there's a generational curse on your family, you could also look in the lineage and see what has been going on up in your lineage. And if you see a p pattern of that type of stuff with your mother, your grandmother or so on, so on going on, then you know, there's a generational curse and you want, you want to break that. You want to know how to break that. Um, and so when you break break those things off, then you'll notice that you are free. Then you're going to see clearly. You're going to track other things. Because I remember in, in our relationship, because the spirit of rejection was inside of me, there's a lot of things that Joel would do that would, would make me feel rejected. And he didn't, I know if he, he, he didn't, it, that wasn't his intention, but he would keep doing it. And then there's a, there's a, there was a, a spirit of like, he, the, the, you were explaining to me that you couldn't stand me at one. Like, what is wrong with this woman? I can't really, I love her, but I can't really understand. Sometimes I want to strangle her, you know, <laughs> just hearing her voice is like screeching on a, on a, right. on it, a book. I, I felt like I saw you as an enemy. Right. Uh, versus seeing you as a as a as a partner. Right. Um, I felt like we were fighting against each other versus us collaborating to do something together. Right. And so that that type of influence causes that. Right. So you know? so yeah. so it is really really important to understand that marriages can easily lose that luster mm -hmm. and it can lose the fire that is expected should be expected and should exist in a marriage if we can't get to a place where we're sharing all of ourselves with one another yeah. you know there are things about i'll tell you right now there are things about me that i never thought i would share with anyone and there's things about Sherilyn that she didn't think 
you know, she would ever really share with anyone that we have been very transparent with each other on as husband and wives. And, you know, when you think that a bad, dark part of our life would be, uh, would put a damper or, or, or bring a problem to our relationship, what it has done, it has created a level of trust and intimacy for us when we were able to get to that place where we we realized we could trust each other with every uh the darkest parts of our lives we can expose it to one another what that has done more than anything else it has driven us to a closer a better place of intimacy mm -hmm. because we were able to go there now here's what i'm going to tell you that's a process you know sherilyn have to be had to be able to know that joel is in a place of maturity where he can uh, handle um, anything that I want to share with him. And I also needed to know that Sherilyn was not going to dishonor me or shame me with any of the details that I was ready or, or wanted to, sh uh, to, to bring to her. And so once we were able to, over time, build trust in one another's ability to be mature with those deep things, um, we were able to uh, uh, unload and allow each other to penetrate our emotions, penetrate us intimately, uh, emotionally. And I think that um, that is one of the most beautiful things because that, that emotional connection that takes you to a deep place of intimacy is what allows the relationship to flourish and be beautiful and, um, and, 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 and bring that fire back to the relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, when the barriers are out of the way, like, for example, we talked about generational issues. We talk about, um, you know, situations in, a, in our life, past experience, uh, antitrust, shame. Once all these things are exposed, you know, mm -hmm. um, we it, it helps us to get there. And a lot of the times, we as individuals, we have to humble ourselves and realize, you know what? Things are not going in the way that I, I desire. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to blame myself. I'm not saying that you blame yourself. And so, oh, woe is me and that type of thing. But you want to recognize that something is going on. You have to identify that there is an issue that's going on in our relationship, and we need to find out. And usually, one person is the um, the one person starts to look in, look into the relationship is not going the um, go, that that's not going well, and the other person thinks that everything is okay. But we want to make sure that we identify that you know this is not okay. You know, God intended to me to enjoy my relate our relationship and my marriage even more than this. I did not. Get get married to my husband for us to be estranged and not be together together on everything or marry my wife so I could love and care and protect for and um, provide for her and us build a family together so when we identify that there are certain issues then we we want to seek we want to we want to seek God's guidance we want to seek guidance from someone else that may be able to help us so some people may not be um uh in the spiritual sense okay i don't i don't believe i don't have a relationship with god but you have to reach out to someone outside of the relationship to be able to um to for for help someone that you see that they have the fruits on the tree though you don't want to go to someone that is single or some person that is just a counselor and they're not even married um you want to make you want to go to someone to seek the information because you see when you get new information inside of you then it gives you the strength to be able to now say let's fight for whatever it is and as we start to fight you realize that the fight is not just a physical fight but it's a, a more spiritual fight than anything else Absolutely. and so when you start to fight the, on the spiritual ground um spiritual point and you break off all those resistance that is resisting you from getting forward you will get the open eye and a clarity like never before and so now the information when you hear your, your your spouse speak and tell you something now instead of being prideful you're going to humble yourself and you're going to listen with a broken and contrite heart mm -hmm. and love is going to overcome you and get patience and all these different things and kindness will overwhelm you and you're going to be okay Absolutely. and then your spouse will see how you receive the information and they're going to be 
yeah this is a this is a changed person now I know I can expose myself and now you, you have a dialogue you have conversation you have communication and you can start working and then when God see you're trying then he's gonna send people information resources necessary for you to be able to go to the next level but it's a process we got to first know that you know what um, Proverbs 11 9 B said through knowledge shall the just be Absolutely. delivered so we have to start with knowledge so if you're watching this tonight again it shows that you are hungry and you're thirsting for better and um, and because you're doing so God is gonna gonna move heaven and earth to get to you and get the things that are necessary for your healing because he hears your heart because you're saying you know what I don't want to be in this place anymore I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I don't want to be like the rest of the people um, what you call it a, a, just a number a statistic and so you really got to start fighting that way and then you see God open doors for you one of my friends was telling me that there's a lot of things she wanted to share with her husband but 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 she can't she can't tell him and she's not happy about not telling him because but she can't tell him because he's always he always take her, her for, for granted. granted absolutely yeah. um that is that is um that is a real concern mm -hmm. of i think every spouse that you know wants to become intimate with their spouse but they realize that my spouse is not there mm -hmm. or my spouse is not mature enough to handle um, getting to this next level. Mm -hmm. What are some things you 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 recommend for a couple that find themselves in that position? Well, the individual again, she already she identified that there's some that there's an issue and that she wants change. That alone, God hears her heart. So she wants to make sure that she petition, bring this petition before God. What I did when I, whenever I see issues um, that we were having in our marriage, I brought it before God. And a lot of times I did not, at that time I did not know a lot of what the Bible said. So what I did was Google. I Google, what does the Bible say about this? So um, maybe her, her, I don't know if her husband's heart is, har heart is hardened um, towards her. There's a scripture in Ezekiel 26, 36 that says that God will take away our heart, stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. So she could play, pray that, Father God, I pray according to your word that, you, you, that my husband is your son and that you will take away his stony heart and give him a heart of flesh so that his mind will be open and his heart will be receptive to me. Or if he just don't understand the responsibility of being a husband that loves his wife, he can go to, she can go to Ephesians 5, 25 and she reads what it says about her husband and she said you petitioned the father he said father God I thank you that you hear my voice and you said whatever I ask and I believe that I receive I will, I will receive it so you, according to your word in Ephesians 5 25 you said husband love your wife and 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 and, and um and care for her sacrifice like um as for Christ her as Christ loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for for the church so I thank you father God that my husband will sacrifice his his needs his sac sac whatever it is that he's putting in front of her I thank you that he will sacrifice um, his sports his friends his mm -hmm. job he's, uh, he sacrifice whatever it is mm -hmm. that he's putting in, in then, front of him um, her and, and tangibly or, yeah. or what is it that needs to happen um, realistically also is that every in every relationship there's two things that has to happen you got to tackle things spiritually and you also got to deal with the person's soul right and so dealing with a person's soul means having a conversation and to find out where they they are in a conversation would be like hey you know this is where i'm at this is the struggle that i'm dealing with i feel like you know um we need to work together or we need to work on this together would you be willing to for us to get some help and sit down so we can grow in this area of our marriage mm -hmm. so that we can get to the place that we need to be um, because really and truly two people can't walk together in any direction unless they agree about the direction that they're going in and so uh, for a lot of spouses we don't have really a clear idea of where our spouse is in terms of um, their desire to walk with us and their desire to go into the future together um, in, in growth mode. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that we ask those questions to find out where they're at and to find out, are you willing to work with me? Are you willing to grow? Because I, I, I wanna grow. Are you willing for us to grow together mm -hmm. and get the level of help? 
that we need to get. Right. Amen. I mean, and just prayer and, and, and dealing with this spiritually is just to prepare the field. To prepare the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what the relationship is like. Where, where the husband is spiritually, mentally, um, and so on. So the, the, the safest thing, I believe, because God loves us so much. That, you know, when we put, when we petition him, he prepares a, a, a supernatural atmosphere for us to be able to come. And just lay down this situation in front of the person. It's like a protection you're putting over yourself. Absolutely. And so... Um, you like Joel to mention again. Now you approach the person. Now based on their response, you know where they are, and then now you know that this area is where you you can pray upon, pray on um, to help to penetrate. And again, it's a process that you go through. But with the help of God inside of it, you can overcome um, difficult situation, difficult com um, conversation. And we do recommend that you do it with someone that knows. So, um, you know, if the, your friend could watch our videos and, you know, also if they could, re if she wants to reach out to me, she could definitely do so on Family Talk. You could, um, there is um, a WhatsApp there um, that she could just reach out and ask questions and I could, you know, she could be more um, transparent more specific. specific right mm -hmm. and we'll be able to help her um, even more there but that's a great question absolutely um, I see someone here um, Sonia says I always say that how you ask a question will determine the outcome yeah uh, absolutely it's a lot of times um, with with dealing with people in general um, it's not what you say but it's how how you how say you it, say it. Mm -hmm. and um, if if we if we train ourselves to be offensive um, with people, we have to prepare ourselves also to not get the results yeah, that we're looking to get out um, out yeah. of the situation. And so, absolutely correct. Um, asking the question, framing the question for the person to understand that you know um, I care about you, I care about our relationship, and I believe that we can be in a great place if we can work together and if we can grow together. Would you be willing um, to join hands with me, lock hands with me, and let's go get the help we need yeah. so that we can get to that And place. also prayer is a good way for past. Because when I was hot-headed about going, approaching you with any situation that we pro in the past we would, we would explode about, what put me in a better posture is when I included God in it by going to Him and pray to help to help set the stage. And a lot of time, Holy Spirit will speak to me about my heart and my approach. Uh, exactly what you said, you know, um, and then when, so when I go to speak to my husband, I was in a humble, humble posture before God. And so I was careful with my words mm -hmm. and my behavior. So it actually helps the person praying as well, the person that you're praying for. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to start with this one of um, not sharing all of ourselves as being, you know, the number one inhibitor for us getting to where we need to be in terms of putting the spark back in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, the next thing I want to move on to, um, if we, if if you think we're good to move yeah. on, the next thing that I'd like to move on. I know on you're to, excited to move on to the next thing. So <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I want to move on to, as as a reason why marriages lose their spark, is when there is um, no or low priority on sex. Right, I, 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 I'm happy that we were able to start with the fact that we're not sharing much of one another because things like the past, things like um, not being able to share yourself with your spouse because of the way they respond towards you, these are all things that does affect sex. Mm -hmm. But in general, if we have a mindset or a situation that's causing us to take for granted the, the reality of sex in marriage, then the marriage is going to be suffering and straining. Mm -hmm. um, a marriage that is um, lack of void of sex and fun is basically like a, a, a business arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need to understand that um, sex is a big need. And, and I mentioned the word need. Yeah. Make sense? Um, for... Access, um, sex again. Sex is just more. Is more than just an action. Um, you see, when 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 I, when I, when I believe, that according to scripture, when God God intended sex for, to be a covenant between a husband and a wife, and every time we um, um, husband and wife have sex, that covenant is renewed. 
That's why it's so, um, that's why God said, you know, make sure, you know, you don't have sex before marriage. A lot of, well, a lot of us may not be, uh, you know, honoring that however every time you're in a marriage you break other covenants and you 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 re, re, you reinstall the, the covenant with your spouse so every time you have sex is a stronger um, covenant so when you use sex as a weapon you're actually using a weapon against yourself Absolutely. because God created you you know both male and female to come together mm -hmm. um, in, fa in, in fact the Bible said the only time that a man and a woman can, um, should not come together is if they're giving themselves to, um, uh, to fasting yeah, to but a we time should of to a time of fasting, but all other times we are supposed to come together um, in, in sexually. Now, of course, we know there's a lot of hindrances that prevent that from happening. I don't know if you want to go into the psychological um, connection that happens because we are supposed to connect mm -hmm. when we're having sex, but that does that is not always the case, and there's a reason for that. Absolutely, you know, the, uh, you, you, we hear this popular terminology called soul ties being used a lot in in the context of and soul ties are formed in different ways but then they are sexual soul ties and scientists have now proven and shown mm -hmm. that in the process of a person having sex with another person mm -hmm. what happens is there 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 there's a, a part of the brain that begins to connect with the other person that they've been having uh, sex with. Mm -hmm. What happens to us is the more we're able to get together with one another and have sex, the more intimately we connect. And, and, and I'm talking about person to person. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, I want you guys to look it up um, and get the information from the horse's mouth. There's a pastor called Miles McPherson that did a great talk on sex and sexual connection. So just Google Miles McPherson and type in the word, type in the phrase Miles McPherson on sex in marriage. And what he's going to explain to you is how the chemicals in the brain, when we are connected to one partner consistently, begins to allow us to grow intimately with that partner. But people that scientists have done studies on that has been connected to multiple partners mm -hmm. or have been addicted to things like pornography, they lose the ability to gain intimacy with one person because the brain mm -hmm. and the chemicals released in the brain are now at a place of confusion because of the images that the people that they've done the study on that has either watched a lot of pornography or has been connected to a multiple bunch of multiple partners. partners. So when and they so, have the multiple partners, their brain is doing this. Side of their brain is doing this. So um, every time, I mean, when one person's brain is doing this because they have multiple partners or pornography because they don't know, they, the, 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 that brain cannot, don't know where to connect where or to, who to connect to. Correct. You know, so it's all confused with all this different information. And here you come with a partner right and then you're all this way with all the different partners that you've had or um, watching so many pornography and so on and you're trying to connect it can't connect you cannot connect and so there's issues so one what, what happens is if both people that way the brain just um resist, re, re, releases cortisol and the brain just goes like this so it can't it, it can't it can't connect so it intimacy becomes, intimacy for a person in that situation is 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 blocked Mm -hmm. And so sex is sex is something that the Bible uh the, the 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 Bible tells us is 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 for a couple to be scripture tells us in Genesis that a man should leave his father and mother and then the two shall join together and become one flesh right and then the result of that scripture in Genesis 2 says that they will be able to become naked and unashamed which means that their intimacy their level of connection is at its deepest. Mm -hmm. And so sex in marriage is meant for that reason. Now, in a situation where in a marriage sex is used as a weapon to, to manipulate or, or a person has a, a problem connecting with their spouse uh, or a person is saying to their spouse that, you know, you know, sex is not important to me. Why do we need to have sex and all this stuff? Um, that becomes a place where the enemy can come in because you're not 
able to connect at that level that is so healthy for you mentally it's healthy for you emotionally it's just healthy all across the board to be um, uh, sexually connected to your spouse in the most healthy way I see Colleen here hi Colleen are you still there um, some people some people brothers and sisters you can take a man from a gutter but you you can't you cannot take the gutter from from him well, that's a nice saying, Colleen, and this is why we are we 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 are doing these programs. It's so that we can ed educate people and to help um, singles or people before relationship or who have made decisions that they think is a um, bad decisions that they could correct these things. And prayer is never in vain once you understand the word of God, because there's power in the word of God to be able to help in situation. We mentioned that some people might be going having some kind of soul ties. They could have generational curse verses on them. There could be so many things that could have um, get that person to be in that gutter mentality that the spirit um, spiritually can be broken off of them so that a real person can emerge. And so, you know, we believe in prayer because we understand. When you understand the word of God, then when, when you pray, you pray with the power of the understanding that you have. So, people, a lot of people are broken. We have a lot of, this world is full with broken. We're all broken people. And so, so this is why we want we have programs like this and so many people that do a lot of programs on deliverance and on spiritual understanding so that we understand that we're not fighting against flesh and flesh and blood enemies and these flesh and blood enemies are trying to corrupt us i was talking to someone um um just the other day and they uh, i was explaining to them i said we are satan's best disguise because when we don't know better instead of seeking the information we 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 got we grasp on on emotions and so on and we make those decisions and the bible tell us through knowledge that the just shall be delivered um um what was it uh, i kind of lost track of, of what i was saying but basically in 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 relationship and in situations we want to make sure that we are putting it in god's hand completely because a lot of us feel like you know what we have it together but we really don't joel and i even we are growing in this as we are we are growing our goal is to share information of things that work for us and many others so that those who are coming on would have hope you know, see, um, I believe that God put us through tests and struggles and trials. And when we overcome, we're supposed to share it with our brothers and sisters to help them along the way. Because when we do that, God is God is pleased and God's name is glorified. Absolutely. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, I'm going to remember later on what else I wanted to tell you. But I'm glad that you did share that because that, that would be my mentality too, prior to the knowledge of God and what we know and understand right now. Absolutely. Um, you know, we mentioned earlier when we were talking about um, the fact that, you know, one of the things that would shut down a relationship from having the spark it needs is that people won't share all of themselves. Yeah. And we mentioned that some of the reasons why people won't share all of themselves is like shame, mm -hmm. um, past abuse and stuff like that. Well, one of the reasons why sex may not be a priority for a spouse is that maybe they went through um, a trauma with sex. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've heard tons and tons of stories of uh, either people that were either sexually abused, molested. Um, and for women, it, the world is hard. Let, let me tell you, women, I, I apologize to you on behalf of m all men around the world. Because as a man, I couldn't even imagine being a woman where you're walking down the street and people are winding down their window and yelling stuff at you. And these are the things that women face. Men don't face that stuff um, as much as women do. Um, so we're living in a world where um, men sexually objectify women. And as you're walking from your house to the train station or you're going to catch a bus or you're in the grocery store, sometimes the stuff that guys, <laughs> that guys yell out of a car window to a woman um, hearing that year after year from a, from the time you were a young lady all the way to the point that you get married mm -hmm. can be quite a turn off. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard and we've worked with people personally who has gotten to a point where they have literally no respect um, or lost even the, 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 the sense of appreciation for, for the sexual aspect of their life as a mm -hmm. female 
that it's overrated now mm -hmm. because men have uh you know violated that area of their life or made it seem so nasty that um they don't really value that aspect of life and they want to move on to bigger and better things yet sex is such an important aspect in a marriage covenant and so um you know I mean, we have we have we have that side of things and we also have the side where um re uh, religiously um sex has been 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 sh seen as a negative thing mm -hmm. so to scare young girls and to scare young men not to, not to have sex before marriage um a lot of churches pump fear um criticize them and make sex seem as like such an evil thing and not this in this beautiful um connection that God institution instituted for marriage you know um you know young ladies are uh are, are said to say okay you like the devil you're a whore you're a, you're a slut or whatever the case be that even if you take uh, a compliment from a young man and you blush or whatever right then and there they want to just uh, have perform an exorcist on you in the church um and that type of thing but you see if if this is modeled for you in the home properly you know the, a husband loving his wife this is the best place training ground for children marriage is the best training ground for the next generation because how dad treats mom and how dad value mom and how mom respects dad mm -hmm. and, and 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 they have a great um um relationship where they cut they kiss their whole even if the kids go ew whatever you know whatever the case may be but you're sh teaching your children affection because affection is very important if not they're gonna get the information outside they're gonna look for it and Satan that wicked dirty stinking devil he is gonna find a way to lure your sons and your daughters to pornography to the video game the expressive vi video game how they have these girls fighting with nothing on you know the cartoons are so sexually explicit too in in these days and um, which is unbelievable and mind-boggling so they're they're showing our sons and daughters sex without their permission all over the place so if we don't demonstrate it in the home in the way that it should be it's in the marriage then guess what the children are going to get taught outside and so here lies you know situation that come come about on on that on that front absolutely and so we must understand and i think Sherilyn nailed it on the head early in this message where we talked about the fact that uh, scripture tells us that through knowledge in proverbs 11 9b true knowledge shall the just be delivered and when we don't know or we don't understand um, why all of these components of life um, concerning marriage is important for us to operate in and then of course train the next generation um, that's where we're gonna see a lot of these um, errors a lot of these things right. happening and if any Christian folk um, so holy then thou have an issue with this explain songs of Solomon to me why was that put inside of the Bible you know again again everything is in context you know you want to make sure that you are you know using wisdom on this because anything in excess is error of course so you know you don't want to be too much on the other side one side and too much on the other side but you want to have the perfect balance when you're demonstrating an example um yeah, for the children absolutely absolutely so you know marriages lose their spark number one because you know we we don't share all of ourselves with one another of course um sex is not a priority that's another reason why it does lose a spark and a huge one Sherilyn a huge one and this don't apply to you guys if you're here as couples watching this together but a huge one is when we stop growing mm -hmm. when either one of the parties in the marriage stop growing so growing together is a big part of maintaining the fire in any relationship for a relationship to be vibrant you can't run the relationship on last week's growth. Mm -hmm. You can't run it on last year's understanding or the understanding that you had when you first got married um, because life is evolving, life is changing, life is beginning to compound more challenges to your marriage and your relationship. Let me tell you, it would have been easy to keep the flames burning in a relationship when you first met because there's so much that you naturally need to get to know about one mm -hmm. another, right? But once you know those things about one another, once you know 
you know, um, what he really looks like in the morning when he wake up, what she really looks like in the morning when she wake up, what his breath smells like. Once, once life begins to happen, once you, you tick your spouse off the first time and they say uh, something that, that shock you, that you're like, whoa, is this the same guy that was romancing me? telling me how much I mean to him and now he just called me a fool or an idiot or he just cursed at me. These things that naturally happen, they suck the life out of a, of, of a relationship. They suck the excitement out of a relationship. And so when we put our growth on pause and we decide we're not going to grow together, we're actually putting the relationship under a lot of strain. Sherilyn, mm -hmm. as a new mother, was there a lot more strain on you as a new mom than when we were just married with no children? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if Sherilyn and I didn't grow ourselves after we had our first child, then the level of understanding and growth that we had prior to having children would absolutely be, we would be malnourished in our ability to keep the fire burning and have a child that's, in, that's in need of both of our attention, mm -hmm. right? So every year, every moment of a relationship as we progress in life, we still need to maintain our ability to get growth. And so this is why Sherilyn and I recommend that once a week we get on here on a Sunday afternoon, uh, 7 p.m. This is a great forum for couples to say, you know what, let's use this time once a week. Let's spend an hour together getting uh, some more information to grow ourselves because the, 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 the woman with a, with a new child is not the same woman you got married to. Right. The woman with a, with, a, with a teenage child is not the same woman you got married to. The man with more bills, with more responsibility, um, with aging parents, with all these different things that are going to happen to him um, to load him up with more responsibility as he grows older is not the same man you got married to. And so it requires a different level of maturity, a different level of understanding, and a different level of, of, of emotional intelligence and muscle to be able to handle a growing life and also still fight for the relationship to maintain the fire and the flame that it had before. So growth is something that just we just can't get away from that. I was just thinking in mm -hmm. my mind, I says as a mother, when you have young children or you know, or you're or a person that, you know, have a young people, young, young people in the church or young people in the community that you really love and, um, you know, they're in a relationship. I recommend that the, one of the best things you could do is help them in their growth process, educate them, them have them educate themselves about relationship prior to getting to a relationship or if they're young in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Encourage that young lady, you know, let's, you know, with one of the times on our date, come over to our house or we go over to, to each other's house if that's what they do. And let's watch programs like this together. Pro programs with spiritual teaching on relationships, you know, so that they can get informed. And if a guy doesn't want to sit down with a young lady to, to, to learn about things of the future, then guess what? <laughs> you know, that's that, that young lady, no matter how curly here the look and how, how hazel his eyes are and how chiseled his muscle is you leave him in the store because when what's going to happen is when he comes into the house he's going to wreak havoc because if he's not willing to grow prior to getting um you know getting with you or getting married to you then guess what when you're married again the mindset is that he has you trapped and he's not going to be willing to grow so we have an opportunity to really help the next generation by feeding them information you know young lady if you want to know that guy is right for you if he's a type that is teachable and is able to learn and grow then when you know no matter if he don't have a lot of money right now you know that if he's looking into growth that you know they could work together and he's getting the information on what it takes to build a relationship Absolutely. a young lady just mentioned 
um, in in the questions. He was she was talking about some. She it would be great for men to listen to this, and maybe you could st um, start off by answering this. It's great for men, men to listen to this message. It's great for again for both parties to listen to. But but study shows that women are most likely to to seek for help than men are. Um, but um, you know it's great for men to listen to this because she finds that a lot of husbands take their wives for granted. So what do you think about that? Absolutely. Um... A lot of times you'll find, and I would say almost 100% of the times, when a couple comes to us for help, um, it's usually the wife coming first. Um, usually the wife initiating the, mm -hmm. the, the help. The wife saying, hey, you know, um, our relationship is struggling and, you know, we've been watching your program. Can you guys counsel us or help us through this season? And a lot of times women can get uh, discouraged and say, well, you know, my husband should be a leader and uh, he should be the one that comes to help. And as great as that sounds, uh, we got to recognize that God actually mm -hmm. uh, designed and called you the wife, the helper. Mm -hmm. And most of the times you'll find that the woman is the one that's making the first move because she's making the move to help her husband get to where he needs to right. be. And so it's not something that really should be looked at as a negative. Um, the world is conditioning us to look at it as a negative because mainly women come first for help. Yeah. But you're actually, wives, doing an awesome job at your job description, which is being the helper. Um, that man um, will thank you for initiating that move um, and by being that person. Sherilyn uh, helped me in a lot of ways. Um, by making some first moves or by recommending, hey, I just found this video. Uh, can we watch it together tonight? And, you know, reluctantly, many times, I sit down and watch a video with Sherilyn. And I must mention, yeah. reluctantly, <laughs> I watched the video. Um, a lot of times I was angry in yeah. the beginning of watching the video or reading something together with Sherilyn. Um, but then, you know what? Sometimes five or ten minutes in, I realized, wow, this is really good information. Now I'm actually feeling embarrassed that I came in reluctantly or angrily to watch the video, but I was grateful that she recommended it. To the point where after a while when she recommended something, I actually began to trust her recommendation because I remembered you know, the last couple of times we did look at something, um, it was good. And then over time, I began to be the one that mm -hmm. start looking proactively mm -hmm. because now I'm starting to feel like, you know what, man, you can't have your wife be the one bringing all this information to you all the time. And so at that point, you know, God began to get my attention and, and, and help me get out in front uh, and, and begin to pick up the lead role. But many times, almost all the time. Uh, women are the ones that make the first move and that's because they're doing their job they're, yeah. they're, they're helping. and that's what we talked about we started talking about in the beginning part of the conversation um, you know the process and how we can approach one another one person was saying your approach is, your approach is very important and I start by saying you want to start with spiritually you want to deal with it spiritually because when you seek God the person that is praying there's a certain posture and a certain overwhelming humility that it takes to even seek the help mm -hmm. so when you're going before God your heart in a, is in a certain posture hopefully you're not prideful but you know you're humbling and asking God to guide you and direct you and also praying for your spouse in that area in the area that you know that they, you might receive a resistance so a lot of times before even asking Joel to sit down because this is a lot of times before I would ask him to watch something but you know you never have time and he shun me, me, me off or he didn't want to and then I would just not do it but I didn't give up I had to find a way because I knew who he was and I knew what we could be as a cup, um, couple and then so I went to the Lord and when I did, when I come and I approach, he helped me my approach. Someone mentioned approaches is, is, is very important. Um, so when I approach him in this in a way, uh, in a certain way, he said, okay, reluctantly. And so again, kindness. Kindness is like honey. It is sweet to the soul and it's <laughs> and it's 
healthy to the bones. So, you know, in such a kind way. Um, and of course, you know, love, the, the one the definition of love is kindness. Mm -hmm. So when I did it um, in that way, he was like, though reluctant, he did sit did, down. I did it anyway, right? right. And so we want to wrap this up tonight because yeah. we're kind of over an hour already. Yeah. Or, or about an hour. Um, uh, lastly, I want to talk about the la one of the one of the last things I want to talk about that that takes away the spark from a relationship is when we buy into the idea that after a couple of years, you know, everything about the marriage is going downhill, um, and and that's something that the world sells us. Honestly, yeah. when I heard from men, and when I still hear from men hmm. to to this day, they usually ask questions like you know, like they're professionals, you know, how long you been married? Oh, you still in your honeymoon phase, man. Wait till five years. Wait till ten years. It's all downhill from here. Mm. Oh, you having a lot of sex right now? Oh, come on, bro. Wait for a couple of years. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be a sexless marriage or whatever. Oh or don't get married. You're gonna have more sex as a single guy than a married guy. You know what I mean? These are the things that that people say to other people that are either going to get married or that are newly married and then we buy into those things and so what we do is we create this tradition of marriage is good for for a year or two and then it's downhill from there not I, realizing I, sorry not realizing that death and life is in the power of the tongue and they have an authority so whatever they speak will happen mm -hmm. and they're also pro if you you allow somebody to prophesy on on your own marriage by taking up that their mindset then again you're going to be confessing the same thing so you're the one that, there's a co-conspirator in your own marriage mm -hmm. for and the scripture tells us you know um you know, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good, good mor morals. Yeah. And so the moment you hear uh, a friend mm -hmm. or a co-worker, a colleague that speaks badly or poorly of marriage, beware. <laughs> beware that you're about to be bewitched. <laughs> right? <laughs> beware of anybody that speaks negatively about anything that you are involved with. If you're in marriage and they're saying marriage is bad... I'm telling you right now, find some people to get around that are telling you how awesome marriage is. Find some people that you could look at and tell that they're having a great time in marriage mm -hmm. and get around those people. There's a very small percentage of people in this world that are positive. There's a very small percentage of people in this world that are really um, succeeding at anything in life. And so it's important when we identify those people that are succeeding at those things in life that we admire, that we get around them, and that we limit our affiliation with people that want to pull us down and that want to speak badly of anything that we're hooked up to or connected to. Mm -hmm. I don't get around people that are divorced. I don't hang out and, and spend consuming a whole lot of time with people that are divorced or that had bad marriage experiences. Because the scripture tells us, hey, don't be fooled. Bad company corrupts good morals. If you throw a rotten mango in a barrel full of good mangoes, the good mangoes don't make the rotten mango get better. The rotten mango juice will roll down on the good mangoes and all of them will get bad. Mm -hmm. And so what we do in marriage and in life in general, we put ourselves in, in a position where we're around people that have a bad view of life, a bad view of marriage, a bad view of relationships, and we allow what, what, what they're dealing with um, to soil or to spoil what we have the potential to be great at. Yeah. And so don't allow it. Don't buy into that worldview that, you know, in a few short years down the road, things are going to go downhill. That's the, that's the surest way to out the fire in a marriage. And so tonight, you know, we just wanted to come on here and share just a few things and share some of our thoughts with you and some of our experiences with you um, about how to keep the spark um, burning in a relationship, how to keep the fire burning, how to keep things going. And that, and that is to work towards uh, ultimately sharing all of yourself with your spouse because what you're doing is you are working on adding value to one another and creating more intimacy. Make sure that sex is not something that is low on your priority list, but make sure that it's mutually exciting for both of you because sex, 
sexual a sexual connection provides a level of it's like a power source to boost you emotionally and to boost you physically. And, but, and it's but a need if you, for me. But if you're having issues in in, 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 in the sex area, whether it be um, health wise, then mm-hmm. of course you know you as a couple could seek whatever um, help and advice um, medically um, from a medical professional. What what things what what are some of your options? Because there are options out there that could help in that area. Because mm-hmm. health health could affect some people. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you're going through any kind of spiritual situation where you were or abused sexually and it's and, emo- um, uh, and, and, and abuse um, emotionally that is inhibiting your ability to connect with your partner you know you want to make sure that you have someone pray for you for deliverance and also for healing in those areas because mm-hmm. spiritually um, they have spiritual things that are have legal right and it's incarcerating that part of you and it needs to be unlocked Ex- so, expose it get the expose, help yeah. to expose it and cast it out and of cast your life it out yes absolutely yes, and yes. then of course if if we stop growing we said you yes know, if we stop growing growth is a big big part of the process of keeping the flames going in a marriage there's yeah. nothing worse than a person that is 50 years old that's stuck at the growth level of a 17 year old in a marriage yeah and what's worse in a marriage is when one person has consistently grown but there's another person in the relationship that's still stuck at 20 and at 50 years old, you got a person that is, has matured, and then you got a person that is uh, uh, spiritually immature, emotionally and mentally immature, and has not gained the understanding to be able to work together as a unit. And, and that we should is a have a topic off. on that, on how mm-hmm. to help a person, a marriage that is that unequally. Absolutely, um, we could do level, that. Yes. And then, um, of course, don't buy into the lie that, you know, Marriage is only good in the first few years, and then it goes downhill. Yeah. I think we've proven that wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. You beautiful woman. Thank yeah. you. She keeps me excited. <laughs> and um, we just thank the Lord that we're able to come on here and share with you. We hope that tonight's topic was a blessing to you yes. in some way, shape, or form. Even if you got one little point out of this, yes. um, we you would know, have done our job. We would have done our job. Yeah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for each and every person that's watching this broadcast and will watch it in the future. Lord God, we know that you remember your plans for your children, yeah. plans to do them good and not to do them evil. You you have created the institution of marriage for your own sake, Father God, and you have a purpose for each individual in the marriage and for the marriage itself and also for the family. And so, Lord God, because you first desire relationship and you said in your, you said to yourself, you said, let us make man in a in our own image in our own image let us create them them male and female and let them have dominion but Father God, we know that there was a serpent, um, Satan, the devil, that entered in that and corrupted it. And he's still trying to do it today. He's still doing it today. So Father God, we ask for the revealing and the exposing of Satan's plot plans and scheme in each and every marriage. Father God, where there's where wherever he plants uh, any seed of discord, of the divorce, of um, sexlessness, of um, insecurity, shame, fear, any, any spirit that is not of you Lord God that's in this marriage Father God we bind them right now and cast them away from your children we thank you Father God your word said that whatever we bound in heaven is bound on earth so we bound this e- these evil spirits trying to operate in the lives of your children or currently operating in the child of your, your children Father God we ask that you, you said in your word that we have the authority to cast down any kind of idols or any kind of altars that were erected to derail the, your children from their God given purpose and that includes their marriage and the success of their marriage yes. and the richness of their marriage. So, Father God, you know the purpose of each and every marriage. So, every altar that was set up against them in the name of Jesus, I ask that you send the fire, Holy Ghost fire from heaven to destroy every last one of these altars, whether it be generationally or altars set up by these individuals, knowingly or unknowingly. Father God, we ask that they be consumed and dismantled in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you that no weapons form against these relationships will prosper and every tongue that rises up against each and every one of these families father god we condemn right now every lying tongue we bind and cast out the the the, the residues from their their 
the issues of, of these lying tongues and the problem that arose from the spirit of lying, Lord Jesus, to be cast out and be commanded to die still burn in the name of Jesus. Father God, every false prophecy that was prophesied over every marriage, Lord God, we cancel them and call them null and void yeah. and command them to die still burn now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you that your people are set free from divorce, set free from fear, set free from shame. They're set free from, from anger and and um, discord. They set free from any kind of uh, sexual perversion in any way, shape, or form. And whom the Son set free is free indeed because you said that curse was he was placed on the cross that, that your children will receive the blessings and uh, of Abraham and all the curse has been canceled. So Father God, we thank you that you've set your children free because whom the Son set free is free, free indeed. indeed. And we just thank you tonight, Lord God, that your people, as they seek you, they will find you. When they knock on the door, it shall be open unto them when they ask it shall be given so lord god thank you for revelation knowledge as the spirit of truth infuse your people right now let the spirit of pur purity overwhelm each and every marriage thank you father god that your love will consume each and every home and that all their needs are met according to their riches in christ jesus in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we pray amen amen amen, amen. don't forget folks to like and share this message uh, maybe someone can use it like and share this message or tag someone in it. And also, don't forget that um, Sherilyn and I have a YouTube channel that has so many topics categorized yeah. that, can, that you can now begin to uh, study and grow your relationship in the area of its need. Yeah. You see, this is one of the things that we loved about, uh, about the World Wide Web is that Sherilyn and I, at different points of need in our relationship, mm -hmm we were able to get the help and search for the help we need. So we have all that stuff cataloged in our um, YouTube channel. On Joel the and Joel and Sherilyn Ross. Ross. And of course, Family Talk, if you want to reach out to us, our WhatsApp contact information is on there. You can definitely send us a, ma a message and we'll answer you as soon as we're able to. Absolutely. But know that we will answer you because you matter to God. Amen. We love you guys. Have a great week. We look forward to talking to you soon. Amen.